let's take a look into Apache Kafka basics and try to focus on everything that you should know as a developer before start building event-driven applications on top of Kafka. When you build applications using Kafka, usually you'll have a model like this one. Imagine that you have something like this box that will represent Kafka. We don't know yet what is inside of Kafka. And then you may say that you have something on the left to this application that is writing data into Kafka. We call it a producer. So if you think about a publish subscribe system, this one will be a publisher. Okay, but in Kafka, we call it a producer. And on the other side, you may have applications, one or many, that are reading data from Kafka. They will be a subscriber on the PubSub model, but in Kafka, we call it the consumer. So now we already know two important concepts of Kafka, producers and consumers. Let's drill down into this thing that we are saying that is Kafka. First, how do we install it? Okay, you can install it using Docker. You can install it on your machine, on your servers. You can use something as Confluent Cloud. Everything that you have here is a Kafka cluster. And what is inside of a Kafka cluster? On a Kafka cluster, you have something that we'll call brokers. Each one of these boxes, it's a broker. These brokers will play a huge role regarding scalability of the system as a whole. But before we talk about that, it's important to talk about another important concept that is topics. So what is a topic? When you write data into Kafka, you are writing data into topics. A topic is a kind of a log file. It's an event log of your system that you keep adding data. So imagine that this thing is our log file. And now we have a new event on the system that we want to record. So what you do is that you go to that file and you append that log. Then you have a new event and you append to the end. And you keep doing that every single time that you have something new to add. The interesting thing about this is that the topic is an immutable log. So if for some reason you have a problem on this entry, you can go there and fix it. You need to append a new event fixing it by the end. Like in accounting, if you need to adjust the balance of an account, you will not fix a movement, okay? You will do a new movement that will correct the balance. And here the idea is the same. If you have a new event, a producer will send the message to Kafka and will produce a message to the end. Each message will in fact have a number. So we can say that this one is the one, this one is the two, three, you get it. To those numbers or the number of the message, we call it the offset. It's the offset that will give you the position of the message inside of the topic. And why that is important. On Kafka, messages are in order. Okay, so they happen in a given order and they are kept in order inside of the topic. And why order may be important? Because in some contexts, may be really important to know what happened before. For example, in accounting, having a debit and a credit is different than having a credit and a debit. So if you swap the order, it may have an impact. Now you may ask, what is each one of those entries inside of the topic? And you may see the names message or event being used interchangeably. Usually I will name them as a message. And what is a message? The message will have a value. The value in Kafka is a binary and there you can fit whatever you want. Okay, so Kafka will not impose you a given contract for your messages. Will not ensure that you are using JSON, you are using protobuf, whatever. That's also one important thing about Kafka because you can take the decision on using Kafka as the bare bone of your system. And then you can have multiple technologies that will communicate in different protocols. You don't need to commit to one of them. So you have the value. You also have something that we call a key. The key, in fact, is optional, but you will see how important it is, the key. Then there's another important thing that is a set of headers. Like every message or an HTTP request, you may have a key value pair saying important things regarding that message. Things like message type or, for example, an idempotency key. Besides that, there are other things regarding messages that are important, like compression. But the fundamental thing is the value, the key, and the headers. Now that we know what is a topic, let's see how this topic relates to the brokers that we have talked about moments ago. So let's go up and drill down into our cluster. Moments ago, I told you that a topic is a kind of a file log on your system. In fact, I lied to you, okay? It's not a, a log file, it's a distributed log file. Why? 
Because when you create a new topic, in fact, you will say how many partitions do you want for that topic. It means that Kafka will have a segment of that distributed log file into each one of the brokers that it has, depending on the number of partitions that you assign it. So imagine that for that topic that we were talking about, you decide that you want to go with three partitions. So you go here and you say, okay, I have here one partition, two partitions, three partitions, and let's call them ABC. All those sections are in fact partitions of that topic. When the producer sends a new message, the message will land either on A, B, or C. The cool thing about this is that this gives the scalability needed to the topics. So if you need to consume multiple things in parallel, you can take advantage of partitions to bring more consumers to your application. Other important thing about partitions is that the order that we are talking about on the topic, in fact, is guaranteed inside of a single partition. If you have one consumer here and one consumer here, they will be looking to that topic, that partition of that topic in order, but they will be working in parallel. So imagine that now I'm handling events regarding a customer account. So it's really important to me to make sure that they are treated in order. And how can I do that? When you send a message through a producer to a Kafka topic, it's important that if you really want that that message to be processed in a given order, what you should do is that you should set that message key that we talk about. That message key will be used by Kafka to decide if it should go into A, B, or C. Every time that you send exactly the same key into Kafka, the message will be sent to the same place. If you want to have something regarding a user always be handled in order, what you should do is that you set something like the username or the email into the message key, and then Kafka will calculate on which partition it should land, and let's say that it's B. So every single time that I send a message with my email, it will land on the same place. If I don't care about that, and I want to have the maximum throughput of the system, what I should do instead, message key as no, and then what will happen is that Kafka will take that decision for me using a round robin algorithm. If you have been paying attention of what I've been saying, one thing that maybe you already noticed is that if I'm sending messages regarding a user always to the same broker, it may happen that that broker has a problem and goes down and I lost everything that is inside of that broker. And how Kafka handles that? What mechanisms Kafka has to make sure that you don't lose that type of data. You can use one thing in Kafka that is the idea of followers. What does that mean? Each one of those partitions that we have been talking about, in Kafka we'll call them leaders. So they are the ones that when you are sending a message, reading data, you will be connected to by default. But in fact, you can define a replication factor. And by doing that, what will happen is that you will get from this into this, where the green ones are in fact replicas of the leaders. It means that Kafka will make sure that you have a copy of that data, for example, for partition A, not only on the first broker on the leader, but also on the followers of that leader. So this one here is always following this, and this is always following this as well. That way, what Kafka will do is that if you lose, for example, broker number two, and now you don't have the leader for partition B, what Kafka will do is start a process that we call a leader election. And on that leader election, it will take the decision if either this broker, this one here, or this one here is the best candidate on promoting the partition B follower that is there into a leader. Then, based on that, you should have all the data. But even that is not guaranteed. Why? When you send a message to Kafka when you are producing a message, you can take advantage of one concept that is the acknowledgement. And when you set the acknowledge, you can think about three possible use cases. You can have one scenario where this application on the left side, our producer, absolutely doesn't care if the message sent to here is recorded or not. For example, if you are producing messages regarding metrics or logs in, or for your applications to analytics, maybe losing a few messages is not a big deal for you. You want to maximize the throughput. But in other cases, it's really important to you to be sure that that message was delivered. If that is your scenario, you may set the acknowledgements to be sure that at least the leader has the message. So on that case, what will happen is that you will send the message 
the message will get into a leader and then you can check if that was successful or not before keep going on. Otherwise, you may retry to send the message. The other thing that you may do is that you can set the acknowledgements to be pretty sure that not only the leader has the message, but also the replicas have the message. So that way you can be sure that you are not losing data. Now that we know what happens when we are producing message, let's see what happens when we are consuming. We consume messages using producers. So anything that is reading the topic and handling those messages. The consumer will use the offset that we have talked about here to understand the position where it left off the work when it's starting, but also it's an important metric for you to understand the lag of the system, for example, to understand if you are quite behind the end of that topic or not. In general terms, what will happen when a consumer starts handling a given topic is that it may get there, get the message, okay? The message goes into the consumer and it starts handling that message. Once the message is processed, the consumer will commit the offset into Kafka. That can be done to Zookeeper or into a Kafka topic. It depends on the way that your cluster is operating. But in fact, it's this small detail that makes Kafka as resilient as it is. Why? Because if I process, let's say three messages, and now I'm positioned here, right? So my next message is number four. Even if this consumer goes down, once it gets back up or another one consumer goes into that same place, it can start reading the messages from exactly the same place. The other important thing regarding consumers is that consumers work in a group. It means that you can have multiple consumers and all of them may be looking into the same topic. And how do you do that? You do that by having something that we call a consumer group. Basically what it means is that all those three consumers that we are representing here work together. So on that case, what will happen is that Kafka can be efficient and decide that, for example, the one of the consumers is looking into the partition A, the other one is looking to partition B and the other one is looking to partition C. That way, each consumer will be focused on that partition. It means that if I have three partitions, I don't need to have four consumers, okay? One of them will be idle. This idea of consumer group not only means that you can have multiple consumers working together and each one of them will be looking to a portion of that topic and they will be handling different messages, but also it means that you can go there and you create another consumer group with one or more consumers, and that consumer group may be looking to exactly the same topic, but for a different purpose. Imagine that you are publishing events in your organization regarding products, for example. You are building a product catalog, and now you are publishing things like, I have a new product, product has been updated. Now you may have other services inside of your organization that are interested on those things. And you can do that using multiple consumer groups. That way you can be sure that those offsets that are committed are independent for each consumer group. And that way you may consume the same message multiple times. And we can do that due to one thing that Kafka is different from most message brokers like RabbitMQ and other things. That is the fact that Consuming messages from topic, let's say reading this one, doesn't throw away that message. So the process of cleaning up the topic is independent on the process of reading data. And how Kafka clean up data? Okay, Kafka has a way to keep the topics in shape. So when you create a topic, you will define things like a retention policy. And on that retention policy, you may say things like, please delete after one year. You may have a legal requirement of throwing things away after two years, let's say. You can also do that based on size, but also there's another approach that you can take advantage that is using the compact option. It means that you can configure your topic in a way that if message three and message four have the same message key, in fact, what Kafka will do is that it will throw away the oldest message and will only keep one of it. This is quite useful if you are storing something like a snapshot, for example, the address of a client, it's only available for the rest of the organization, the latest value on that top. Now that you know the basic concepts, it's time to put that in action and make sure that you watch this video where I show you an awesome 
framework that will help you a lot on building your first applications in .NET on top of Kafka. I will see you soon. In the meanwhile, keep it simple.